Hello, welcome to Conversations with a Wounded Healer. I'm your host, Sarah Buino, and if you're listening, you know how to find me. I would love, 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 and be your total BFF if you would go into the Apple Podcast app and give us five stars if you dig us, us. It is us, because there's people behind the scenes, but I guess it's just me talking, but whatever. Anyway, I digress. So (laughs) if you would rate us and write a review, it really, really actually helps lend us some credibility when people do those reviews. I also have a Patreon account, so if you want to become friends there, for just as little as $5 a month, I do a monthly group chat, essentially, on Zoom, where myself and some other members of the community get together and just talk about this kind of stuff that seems really important to the people who come my way. So please consider doing that. So today, I want to have a conversation about hard conversations. So Facebook seems to be the catalyst for a lot of drama these days, right? Let's back up. I listened to this podcast called The Liturgist Podcast. I was turned on to it by an episode that was all about mysticism, and I was really interested. And the podcast in general is like the intersection of art, science, and spirituality. And so there are a lot of episodes that I have just found absolutely super cool, amazing. And one of the hosts of the podcast was a born again Christian, or I can't remember, but he was super duper Christian, actually had quite a lot of fame within the Christian music scene and then left his faith and then kind of came back to faith after a while. So lots of interesting conversations happen on there. And I love that the hosts have really diverse views and they also have a really lovely way of sharing space for those divergent views. So their last episode that they had posted at the time of this recording was a rebroadcast of an episode about abortion, essentially. And I'm, I'm trying to look it up on my phone right now. I do these actually pretty off the cuff. You would think that maybe I should write some of these things down, but I don't. So the episode was called Pro-Life, Pro-Choice, and there were three folks talking about different areas about abortion rights and how difficult it is to have conversations about it. And a couple of the facts that they shared that I found super interesting was that pro-life, pro-choice numbers have stayed the same over generations, over time, it hasn't varied pretty much at all. It's like a minuscule amount that it varies. Whereas other political issues such as gay marriage, that's changed, obviously, to the point where we now have gay marriage. It's become legal, right? So they were kind of talking about that, like why has abortion, you know, kind of stayed the same? And so really kind of digging into also the fact that the names of pro-life and pro-choice were actually kind of bullshit too, because It's just this whole question of like, when does a fetus become a life? When does it get a soul? All of these sorts of things, right? So it's a difficult conversation to have. And there's so many factors that come into play in that discussion. So I loved the podcast and I wanted to share it. And there is a friend of mine from high school. We weren't like super good friends, but you know, you become friends with all of your high school friends on Facebook. And from time to time, I would see her post things about abortion and her views about, you know, abortion is murder. And a couple of times I tried to engage with some of the people on her page. And I am truly about conversation and I'm truly about trying to learn from other people. I am pro-choice, but that doesn't mean I'm going to try to force somebody else to believe that way. I just hope that we as women and anyone who has a uterus can continue to make the choices for their own body. But I also want to respect the values that other people have that don't agree with me. And so trying to engage in some discussion around this. And and I found myself being very stonewalled and anything that I was trying to offer to create discussion, I found that that was rejected. And so I I went out on a limb and I posted on her wall and then I ended up posting it on my wall because what I realized is I'd really love to have a conversation about this issue and learn from people who think differently than I do because I truly believe that's how we're going to make ground in these sort of divisive political times. So I posted on her wall and I said, I'd like to have a conversation. This is an invitation and I'm not here to target anyone. 
I'm literally here to learn. I'm most interested in figuring out why people believe what they believe and what goes underneath that. And I said, you know, this podcast, I think, is one of the best conversations that I've heard on this topic. And two of the three people talking actually seem to fall more in line with pro-life than they do pro-choice. So, you know, it's very interesting. And I was kind of trying to cater to more pro-lifers so that I could bring more people to the discussion. And I go about my day. And then at some point during the day, I was like, oh, I haven't gotten any nasty messages back. Or I haven't I haven't gotten any responses. And so I go to her page to try to check and she'd blocked me. And that made me so profoundly sad. And it was just this feeling of hopelessness that came over me because if I don't have a chance to have a conversation with somebody who I think values my human life, right? Values me as a human who we had some fun together in high school and I certainly respected that she is a loving mother and and whatever else that she's doing with her life. And I felt like the door was slammed like immediately in my face. And it just made me sad thinking, if we can't have these conversations, what the fuck are we going to do to try to come together? And I guess I'm just kind of asking that question of you too. You know, what is it that you see that we can do to extend love and compassion and openness in order to heal some of the, the issues that seem to be between us? When truthfully, one of the conclusions they came to in the podcast is that nobody is pro-abortion, right? Nobody wants to have an abortion. Abortion just happens to be one of those choices that seem to be best in certain circumstances for certain people and that people who are pro-choice, it's just that. It's just the desire to continue to let people with a uterus have a choice about whether or not they bring a child into the world. So nobody's pro-abortion, at least not that I know. And we all want to make sure that human life is valued and respected. And I think that that commonality creates space for discussion, but not in this case. So no matter where you are on this issue, I do hope that you have people in your life who think differently than you, who are willing to come to the table. And I know that even though this experience was hurtful, I'm not going to stop creating the invitation to have these discussions. And I actually, one of my other high school friends who is also really conservative and I'm going to guess is pro-life, she offered to have a discussion. And she and I actually had a discussion about Trump when he was elected. And I found it was healing for me to just hear the things that we had in common. Even though we end up on different sides of the coin with the same issues, there were a lot of things that we have in common. And that's, I don't know, that's just something that I need in order to feel safe in this world. So... Cheers to hard conversations and good luck to you if you'll be having those with friends and family in the future. So thanks as always to Andrea Clunder and the team at Creative Imposter Studios for doing the editing, to Liam O'Donnell for the album art, and to Ben Mueller for our theme music. Thanks so much for tuning in. Until next time, bye-bye. Mm-hmm.